Hi, and thanks for watching. Uh, this is an instructable about how to make a travel practice guitar. Uh, I travel a lot for work, and uh, I didn't like having to go without a guitar, uh, sometimes two or three weeks. Uh, so I tried to think of a way to, uh, to have a guitar that's small and quiet enough to play in a hotel room and that I can fit in my luggage. Um, so the finished product, just to show you, um, looks basically like this. Um, so the idea is that um, just to practice the guitar, if you don't care about how it sounds or anything, really for a guitar all you need is, is basically from here to here, you just need the neck to be able to play. Uh, the rest of it is all to make it, you know, sound nice and uh, and be easy to play and, and use and things. Uh, so I wanted to make the guitar just the absolute minimum size. Um, so I bought a really cheap guitar, uh, the cheapest one I could find uh, online, and it's this totally terrible guitar uh, made in China uh, by people who obviously don't make guitars. Uh, you can see how bad the craftsmanship is. Um, but it was just one that I, I didn't mind, uh, you know, cutting up into little pieces. And, and if it didn't work, you know, who cares? Because it's super cheap. Uh, okay, so the first thing I did was uh, to cut off the back. Um, so I cut along the sides and uh, across the back. And then I also removed the, uh, the bracing on the front. Um, this guitar was really badly made, so that was really easy to do, um, which made it easier. Um, it might be harder with a little better guitar, but um, it, it was important for the construction, as you'll see. Um, so the next thing was uh, to cut off the head. Uh, so I cut off the head right. I just left a little bit um, at the end, just enough room for the saddle, uh, for the nut, sorry. Um, and the headstock gets attached uh, somewhere else, which you'll see later. Um, and then I had to I cut down the headstock um, to make it smaller, um, and also I needed to cut that angle um, along one side of the headstock, and um, that's to make it it work. Um, you'll see how that works later. So uh, I cut out uh, one board um, and stuck it onto the front of the guitar. Uh, put the guitar face down it and stuck, um, glued that with that one board thin board. That's basically the size of how big your guitar body is going to be. Um, so that basically goes to where the, the bridge, um, the far end of the bridge, um, and from the neck. Um, and then cut out a sort of triangular, uh, another board, um, and glued that uh, um, on vertically, uh, touching the neck, uh, touching what would be the Spanish foot, and then tapering down towards where the bridge is, um, and then glued on another board on top of that, so you end up with this sort of, uh, sort of, it's like a box, like an inside-out box, um, this board, one board, two board, three board. Um, and that made a sort of rigid structure that has rigidity in, in both direct, both planes. Um, so the thing's pretty, pretty strong. Um, and I glued and screwed that um, into the, the part that's uh, at the end of the neck, the what would be the Spanish foot if this guitar had one. Um, also cut down the, the this part, the foot of the guitar, a little bit so that the profile this way is uh, is not not as big as it would have been otherwise. So it's uh, sort of as small as it can be. But I'll, you also, I think I, I wanted a little bit um, a little bit of heel here um, to because you sort of feel it when you're playing. Um, and then once you get, uh, once I got those those three boards uh, and this sort of this body shape set, then I just cut out the uh, the front of the guitar, to, um, and I left that little bit of the front there. Um, it seemed easier than than uh, than cut just than trying to get rid of it. Just leave it on there, and it's already um, that's you know the bridge is attached to that, so um, so you've already got the right dimensions between the neck and the bridge. Um, so why bother changing that and just put it put a little um, some boards on the back of that to make it it stiff um, and then I reattached this uh, guitar had a bolt-on bridge um, which made it easier because I had a flat surface to work on I just 
unscrewed the, the bridge and then I just bolted it back on and then cut off those little sort of side wings off of the side of the wing, the bridge. Um, I attached the, the headstock to the, to the back. So instead of having the headstock up here, um, the strings come around, wrap around onto the back of the guitar. They come here through the bridge and then they, the headstock's here and that, that cuts off, you know, this much sort of length of, of the guitar on that end. And makes it that much shorter and uh, put the, the, the headstock on there and, and you can change the tuning just by, by turning it here. It's, it sits down on your, you know, near your belly when you're playing. Um, and that's why the, uh, that angle on the, the headstock had to be done so that the strings could wrap around uh, correctly. Uh, to attach the strings at where the head used to be, um, I, at first I thought I wanted to have sort of a bar here and just tie them onto a, a bar at the end, but I couldn't find a good bar. Um, you might be able to find a better one than I did, but I found these little picture hook hanging things um, at the hardware store, and I bought six of those and stuck it on the end, and uh, that actually, so far it's working pretty well. Um, they're not all that strong, but um, they don't have to be that strong. Probably. Uh, I shouldn't mention this is a classical guitar, so it's nylon string. It's got a lot less string tension than a steel string guitar would have, um, which makes it a little easier for the construction. The, the bracing um, also was, was lighter on the, on the front of the guitar. Um, it makes everything easier in general just because it's less, less tension and less sort of forces that you have to deal with in the construction. You don't have to worry about a truss bar or anything like that. So then I, I basically just put it back together, uh, put the, the tuners on so that they're, they can be done and, and strung it up. And that's the basic uh, final shape of the guitar. That's how big it is. Um, it doesn't look very nice. Uh, I think you could, you could paint it or decorate it or something if you wanted to, to make it look nice. So this is just basically a test, first test to see if it would even work. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with, with how it turned out. Um, I did have a problem uh, you can see, at first I just thought the strings could wrap around just like that. Um, but uh, I found that they dug into the, the wood there. Um, and uh, the, the biggest problem was that, that when they come around here, if they can't slide around this end very well, uh, you, when you tune them, you get a lot of, all the tension goes in here and this, this part, the part of the string you want to move doesn't move and all the tension goes here and they, I kept snapping strings right along here because there was so much tension just here and it wasn't altering the, the tuning at all. Uh, so that was not good and, and that was, this turned out to be the hardest part. Um, I tried, first I had it like that and I realized that wasn't going to work. Um, so the next thing I tried was was putting on some some metal plates along here, hoping that it would slide along. But the the I don't it might be able to it might be possible. But the ones I had had sort of sharp edges, um, and it only took a little bit. Of, I mean, they're not sharp edges, but they're they're like normal metal edges, and that that cut through the the string. Um, and I was breaking strings there. So the next thing I thought was maybe if I I tried some hardwood doweling. Um, hoping the strings would slide along there, but they didn't. It didn't. That didn't work either. Um, and the ending, the system I ended up with in the end, um, you can see in the picture here. Those, those are little. I got some long metal bolts and and stuck them, two of them, uh, so that, and then put the these sort of little metal rings around them so that the, those can sort of turn uh, a little bit. They act almost as rollers, although. They, they don't roll all that well, but that just even just being metal and and uh, and slippery, they sort of the strings can can move a little bit around the end of the guitar, um, and I haven't broken any strings since I tried since I did this system. Um, I think if anyone else tries making one of these, they might be able to come up with a better solution. This was the best one I could come up with um, in a hurry, um, and uh, I might if I make another one in the future, I might try something different, but. Um, I think some metal of a of a high of a high enough diameter um, will allow the strings to 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 roll around the side, and it would even be better if you could find I think some little rollers and put them on the end there. But uh, I couldn't find any rollers uh, that, that that would work at least not easily. Um, maybe a little more searching would help. So that's the basic uh, the basic construction of the 
the guitar. Um, it just just barely fits into my suitcase. I have a pretty big suitcase, but uh, it, it fits in. Um, you need to measure. I mean, this, it's basically all the, the whole length of the instrument is just the scale length of the guitar plus a little tiny bit at the at the nut end and a little bit at the end where the um, where the strings come around. This probably could have been a centimeter shorter or so if I um, really tried. Um, to play it, I found that um, you know, well, it, it sounds like you, you can hear it. it. It almost doesn't make any noise. Um, this one is particularly bad because uh, the, it was such a bad guitar. It was all, all the frets were buzzing and the strings. I had to take these frets out and sand down a little bit because the, the middle frets were too high and, and they, it was even, wasn't even playable. But uh, after a little bit of work on the fretboard, I managed to make it at least playable. Um, it's still not good, but <laughs> it's playable. Um, to play it, um, I found that it, it moves around, you know, you, you, with the classical guitar, you really need it to, to sort of stay um, in one place while you're playing. And you usually use your arm to, to lock the guitar in where it is, but you don't have that any of that with this one. So I attached a strap, um, and I found that um, putting a strap, this strap on, and then I also, it still moved around a lot, so I, I tied a sort of belt around um, my body when, when I play it. I, it's just a little piece of cloth, um, and that keeps it relatively um, solid, um, like in one place here, and I, it, it's actually playable. It's, it's not as good as playing on a, you know, a good guitar, um, but uh, considering I can carry it around um, with me while I'm traveling, um, it's quiet, uh, and, and it's, you know, it's usable. Um, I think I'd like to make another one with a little better neck, because this one was, I mean, this was really terrible. Uh, so, the, um, now that I've learned some of the lessons from this one, and if you have any comments, please leave them below and, and give some ideas. If you want to try it, um, at, at least you, it's good to have a good neck that you can play on, and, and that's really the, the whole point: is just to have a, a neck that you can that I can practice with. I bring my sheet music, I bring this in my suitcase, and then uh, I'm able to play guitar um, in the in the hotel room. So I hope uh, some of you found this useful. Thanks for watching. Um, definitely leave comments or other responses uh, if you have ideas or uh, comments or. If you try something similar, um, I'd, I'd love to hear it. Um, and good luck. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. This has been How to Make a Travel Guitar. Uh, thanks for watching.